As the NFL draft is approaching, we take a look at Packers types, candidates for their top picks in this upcoming draft. This is an Aaron Rodgers free zone. No Aaron Rodgers talk on today's show. Jets fans, you can go do something else. You are locked on Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. So we've talked a lot about the draft over the course of the last few months. Talked a lot about possibilities, players, positions, and we're going to continue to do that, of course, as we look toward this NFL draft that is going to be a a momentous draft no matter how it shakes out because of the picks, um, because of the situation that the Packers find themselves in with Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love, that transition, potentially additional picks in the top 50. We will, of course, see what those look like, how many picks there end up being, all of that are things that we don't know right now. So I wanted to pair the idea of, okay, this is the range that the Packers are picking with the players they're probably considering in that range based on traditional preferences, based on the metrics that they care about, and really based on athletic profile because early in the draft, They have traditionally cared very deeply about athletic profile. And I think especially because these top picks, you have 15, it's 45. There could be some additional picks in there. And if they are, you're talking about 13, whether they flip picks or just that's what they get. 42, 43, whether it's both or one or whatever it is. Those are premium picks. Top 50 picks are really, really really valuable, and the Packers, and and with Brian Gutekinds in particular, he hasn't made that many top 50 picks. And if you go back and look, all of his first round picks have been supreme athletes, relative athletic scores over nine. And remember, for those of you not super familiar with relative athletic score, RAS, we're talking about how athletic are you relative to your peers at that position. Jordan Love is the only player in the first round the Packers have taken under Brian Gutekinds that had an RAS below nine, and his was over eight. I think Darnell Savage, depending on where you put him, was was in the eights as well, actually. Um, But it's all premium athletes. And when you look in the top 50, Elton Jenkins, RAS over nine. And you look at Josh Jackson, also an elite, Athlete. Now, actually, one of the reasons why I think he struggled was that top end speed, but broad jump, size especially, that can really help. And so this is what Brian Gutekinst has prized. And I think this is a really good way, a really good exercise to sort of get us primed to be thinking about the types of players Green Bay could be interested in. So I looked at the at the top and to try and zoom in, because this is one of those really weird years where um we don't have a lot of consensus on the players at the top of this draft. I think we're going to see a first round that is truly bizarre because we're going to have names like Cole Strange was a weird name last year, a strange name, some might say. There's always one or two of those, sometimes three. We might get five or six where it's like most people didn't think that guy was going top 50 and he goes in the first round because there's just... So little consensus on these guys because it's kind of a weak draft. It's kind of a pick your flavors kind of draft. All the receivers are small or if they're big, they're slow. Um, The the pass rushers are either small or they're 
uh, not that athletic. So you have to try and thread the needle here. And it's not an easy thing to do. This is not a draft where, you know, everyone is going to fit all the criteria at the top in the first round where there's just these no brainer guys. So it, let's start in the first round. So I was looking at the athletic, not the athletic, but the athletic, the publication, um, they, they build a consensus board. So we're talking about media companies from around, um, the internet on where they're ranking these players. And I think this gives us a really good idea of just sort of where, you know, the, the market thinks these players are, of course, that's not going to be necessarily where the NFL thinks these, these players are, but, and, and I pointed this out on Twitter, the league knows what the athletic consensus board says, or some version of it. They read mock drafts. They want to know where these guys are probably going to go. They need to know because they need to find value. We have good evidence on this, good statistical um, data. That's redundant, but let's go with it. Um, we have good evidence, historical evidence, that the further you f- you stray from convention, from consensus, the more likely you are to miss. Now, you don't have a high hit rate at most of these positions anyway, but the further afield you go from consensus, the actually the more likely you are to miss. In other words, don't trust your own scouting too much. That can be a hard line to walk because Brian Goodikins is never going to look at his scouting staff and say, well, I know that you guys feel strongly about this, but the markets say this or the consensus is this. And so you guys are idiots. No, that's just not how this works. So it is a difficult line to walk. So let's just look at some of these players. Okay. So if you go, actually, before we get to the this, this cohort, 10 versus 30, go up a little. Your wish list, if you're the Packers, guys who play the premium positions and have that relative athletic score o- over nine. Peter Skaronsky, bang. Paris Johnson Jr., bang. Miles Murphy, bang. Those guys hit the numbers that you're looking for. If they are there at 15, they would certainly fit this mold. We also have some guys who we don't have sufficient testing for. Guys like Jackson Smith, the Jigba. Now, he's just not in the RAS system yet. Um, I believe, depending on what inputs you put in there, he he has an, uh, an RAS over eight, eight and a half in that eight and a half to nine range, depending again on which inputs you put, depending on what you have his 40 time at, all those things. So he could potentially be in this mix, but let's just, for the for the sake of this exercise, look at what the board has and the numbers that we have in place. So at the top, Joy Porter Jr., cornerback from Penn State, absolutely hits what you're looking for. There's been some discussion of moving him to safety. And I think there's two players on this list in particular where you can say, okay, it makes sense for Green Bay if they're going to move these guys to safety. Cam Smith is another one, corner from South Carolina. Some people think he's better as a safety. He's got the size. Very good athletically, but has some stiffness, some limitations in in coverage. And so that's where you'd want you can tackle all those things. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the route that the Packers go. Is it the way I think they're going to go? Is it the way I think they want to go? No. But those are two names that come up on this list. Um, Brian Brzee, the, the defensive lineman from Clemson, also on this list. My pal Jake Morley um, over at Packer Report. Um, he insists that he thinks this is a, a, a Packers uh, move all day. I don't see them going defensive lineman two years in a row, but one of the reasons why I wanted to go through this process was I didn't think they would take an old and an off-ball linebacker, and they did both last year. So I want to try and have as broad a scope here as I possibly can. Um, so Brian Brzee is one of those guys, defensive lineman. Lucas Van Ness is another one. More... Um, more edge than Brzee, who is probably going to be a five tech, three tech kind of guy. But Van Ness's best pass rush comes inside, I think. And so he would be versatile. I don't love him at 15 on the consensus board. He's certainly there. Um, but he's 26th on the consensus board, which is actually closer to where I have him. He's going top 15 in a lot of mocks because of the, the athletic traits. But I just, I don't see it in terms of a top 15 kind of player. But 
certainly fits the criteria on this list. Broderick Jones and Darnell Wright are the two offensive linemen. Now, Broderick Jones is absolutely enormous. Um, He is just a huge person, and I don't think he fits the Packers' um, blocking seams, but they also brought in Caleb Jones and and rostered him, and so maybe that was just a, you know, a lark because you could get an undrafted free agent, but just something to think about. Um, Darnell Wright is the is the offensive tackle that I think is is the stealth pick here if the Packers want to go that direction. Offensive tackle from Tennessee is the kind of guy that makes a lot of sense. He's he is bigger and and I would say more 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 prone to like power schemes and gap schemes in the running game. But as a pass protector, can absolutely be that guy all day for you. Wants to play right tackle, so you have David Bakhtiari. Let him come in and compete at right tackle this year. When David Bakhtiari moves on in a year, most likely. Then you have Zach Tom who can slide in there and then you have Wright at right tackle and you're in a really good position with Jordan Love at quarterback. Um, Another pass rusher I didn't mention on the edge, Cam Smith, or excuse me, Nolan Smith, the other Smith. um, Undersize, 6'2", 238, but an incredible athlete. Um, I, I believe if you put him in the RAS system as a receiver, he would be the most athletic receiver ever. Think about that. Because at 238, he ran the four fours. He is, or four threes, I think. He is an unbelievable athlete. He's not ready there as a pass rusher. I think if um, if the Packers did that, I would I would get it in a way because um, they just, you can never have too much pass rush. I, I don't think um, that's going to be the direction the Packers go. They have generally liked much bigger defensive linemen, um, bigger edge players. Uh, certainly going back to Mike Patton, Zedaria Smith is a big dude. Rashawn Gary is huge. Preston Smith is a big guy. Kingsley and Igbari is a big guy. So he kind of doesn't seem to fit here. And then I did, I left Quentin Johnston off this list because his three cone is just so bad. Like I a, a three cone over seven, three, it doesn't matter what your point of reference is. The Packers like seven or below. It just, I just don't think he is going to hit that. I just don't think he's going to fit for them. I think he's got some redundancies. But, you know, he's the 10th player on this consensus board. He's wide receiver one by consensus. So just something just something to keep in mind here. Um, and, and two other guys I'm, I forgot to mention at the top who are in that top 10 that I think could be in play for the Packers if they become available. Paris Johnson Jr., who I don't think is getting past, past the Bears at nine. And then Miles Murphy, who tested like an absolute alien athlete um, at a special pro day. He, he is one of those guys that I have circled in red. He is one of those. I think he, if they, if they pick a pass rusher in the first round, it's because Miles Murphy is there at 15. He is the guy. So if I'm going to put together a list of players that I think the Packers are most likely to pick from this and, and Trenton Simpson, the off ball linebacker, I don't, he, he hits the mold, but I don't think he's going to be a guy that they take another off ball linebacker. That would be madness. They're not doing that. That's not even like a, they don't value the position. It's they just took one and they paid Devondre Campbell. I, I think Darnell Wright, absolutely in the mix here. If Paris Johnson Jr. falls or Peter Skoronsky falls, absolutely. Um, but then the next level down is Darnell Wright. And then Miles Murphy, absolutely. And then I mentioned Jackson Smith, the Jigba, um, is not in the RAS database as of, as of this recording. Um, I think that he would fit at what they want at 15 and makes a lot of sense. So those are, those are the three guys, if I'm going to predict right now, if they stay at 15, that they would be targeting. Those are the guys that I think make the most sense, fit the profile, and fit what Green Bay tends to like to do in those kinds of scenarios. All right, we're going to look at day two uh, in just a second. Before we do, today's episode is brought to you by Better Help. Better Help is an opportunity for you to get better. However, that means for you. There are myriad scenarios where I can think there were times in my life where it would have been really nice to have someone who could just keep me on track or get me back on track. And that's what BetterHelp is designed for you. Get to know yourself a little bit better. And and that can be a lifelong process, getting to know yourself, getting to find your strengths, your weaknesses, all of those kinds of things. If you're thinking about starting therapy, BetterHelp is a great way to do it. Entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime 
for no additional charge. Discover your potential with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOn today to get 10% off that first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOn. All right, the second round is particularly interesting because the Packers could end up having multiple picks in this range. Whether it's 42 and 45, whether it's 42, 43 and 45, whatever it is, they're probably going to have at least two picks, if not three, in this range. So this is a range that I think is crucial. And this is where the draft, I've been saying this for weeks. This is where the draft is absolutely nails. This is where the meat of the draft is. And for the Packers to have a couple picks in this range would really, really be a a boon for their team. So a couple of players that 35 to 55 on the consensus board. So again, a 20 player band that that are um, I've taken off because they they don't have enough testing, but I think could interest the Packers. Jalen Hyatt already been reported, and I had heard the same going back to the Super Bowl that the Packers are very interested in Jalen Hyatt. And what Justice Mosqueda's reporting elucidated that I was wondering about myself is last year the Packers were very in on Chris Olave. And that they felt like he was a good enough player that they wanted to go get him. In fact, tried to trade up for him. Um, But he does not fit their typical prototypes. Slight. Skinny. Jalen Hyatt, same deal. Now, not small in terms of short, but skinny. Apparently, the Packers view them similarly in terms of These are guys we're willing to relax our thresholds for. I wouldn't be surprised if some of those guys we talked about in in the beginning of the show, the Miles Murphys, the Paris Johnsons, the Pete Skaronskis, if they're not in love with Darnell Wright, that they could trade down into the 20s and take a player like Jalen Hyatt. I think that is very much in play in the first round. Would it be hilarious? Yes, it would. Um, not because he's not worth that pick. I, I actually think at the end of the first round, that's exactly where you're getting good value with someone like Jalen Hyatt, but um, because the Packers don't do that, right? Um, Will McDonald, the fourth, is another guy who is smaller than the Packers, generally tend to like. Um, not Doesn't have the complete battery of tests, but did come in on a top 30 visit. So I want to mention that here. There are a couple pass rushers in this range that I think the Packers could be interested in. And then Matthew Bergeron from Syracuse is another guy. The Packers spent time with him at the Senior Bowl. In fact, um, some of their coaches were on uh, his coaching staff at the Senior Bowl. There was a lot of time being spent there. Um, And so that is, I think, a connection to watch if they want to go offensive line on day two. Um, He is someone who also had a very good showing at the Senior Bowl and really helped his stock. So um, someone who can play guard, can play tackle, uh, that the Packers are, I think, going to have interest in. Again, same requirements because I think they're going to want premium athletes in these spots. So relative athletic score over nine. Isaiah Foskey, the edge rusher from Notre Dame. There's this thing that happens with these players when they test really well sometimes. And you have people go, I don't want a workout warrior because all they know about the player is that he tested really well. But Isaiah Foskey was a guy who was getting first round buzz before the season and then went out and had a double digit sack season. And then went out and tested really, really well. He's from a blue blood program. um, Has the production, has the athletic traits, has the size you look for. I kind of don't want to know what I'm missing here. And the tape is good. He has good tape. Like 42, 43, 45, whatever it is. He fits Green Bay. Makes a lot of sense for Green Bay. Um, The other uh, pass rusher I mentioned, Will McDonald, is Felix Enedike Uzuma from Kansas State, who is just, i he's so good. He's so good, man. I really, really like him. Uh, in the second round, no brainer. I think he's a borderline first round player. I think I actually have him in the first. He is a terrific player. He's 21. And again, we're talking about stealth picks. He's the kind of guy that is just a Packers type kind of all day. So really like that um, for him. And then Derek Hall is another pass rusher. I I personally did not see it on tape. I don't think he belongs in this range. Um, but look, the, the Packers might. 
And so he he has to be mentioned here. A, a name that I mentioned on Twitter, Drew Sanders, who is an off-ball linebacker, but I think some teams might say, look, size, skill set, maybe he's a pass rusher because at Arkansas, he did a little bit of both. He played in the middle, but also lined up on the edge, blitzed. He's got a lot of skill sets. If the Packers hadn't just drafted Quay Walker, I think he would have been really intriguing to them as someone who could, again, play off the ball, play next to Devondre Campbell, but then can do a lot of the things that Quay Walker is doing and did last year playing on the edge, but better because he's actually already a better pass rusher than Quay, kind of by a lot. The Quay Walker thing remains puzzling to me, but we don't have to relitigate that. Um, And then there's two tight ends in this group, Darnell Washington and Luke Musgrave. And I'm going to throw Sam Laporta in this mix because I think he belongs in this mix. He's not in there on the consensus board, but hits the relative athletic scores that you're looking for. Um, He is 56. So he's just like literally one spot. I I probably could have just like added it, but then I'm like, okay, well then if he's 56, Keon White is 57 and, and he makes it. And so then how, and then, you know, how, how, how much do I want to, you know, spread this all out? It was getting too crowded. So I want, I'm going to throw Sam Laporte in here, um, understanding this is where your tight end value is. I think, based on the things that I have heard and been told through this process, that there is a desire from the Packers to go tight end early, to get one of these top guys, Michael Mayer, Dalton Kincaid, one of those two guys, very much on their hit list. But day two is where there's so much value and their kind of guys, athletes, Darnell Washington, Luke Musgrave, San Laporta. This is where you're going to get those guys. And so I think it makes sense to wait. Um, history says wait. But I also will understand if the Packers want to take their shot in the first round with one of these guys. Now, I, I personally don't think there's that much difference between... Michael Mayer and and this the, this group, Dalton Kincaid to me is is a cut above, but is hurt and hasn't tested. It would be very nice to have and know he's the athlete that I think he is and can be in the NFL. Especially with tight ends, I care deeply about athletic traits because we've seen over and over and over the guys hit kind of out of nowhere. Are the guys who are just really good athletes that are just out there playing? You know, Julius Thomas, Jimmy Graham. Did you know he played basketball? Like. Antonio Gates, just athletes that figured it out. Give me those guys. So I I prize maybe over any other position. It's like pass rush or corner. You have to have the physical traits. And then really the only thing I care about with tight end is traits. Just give me all the traits and we'll figure it out. We'll figure a, a guy who has traits and who, and who gives a you know what. That's what I want at tight end. So find me one of those guys. Um... And then there, there is uh, an offensive lineman in this range as well. Um, Cody Malk from, um, I don't know why I said it like that, from uh, North Dakota State. Has met a couple times with Green Bay. I think makes sense in this range for them. And then Drivon Dexter um, is a, a lineman that I have I have taken for the Packers in these mocks. Um, has actually moved up. I think I took him at 78 um, in the mock when I, I took him on our mock draft Monday. So... Second round, like he's got an RAS over nine penetrator. If he falls to 78, I think it makes more sense there. Or if they have, if they end up with 42, 43 and 45, I think that that grabbing a guy like uh, Dexter makes a lot of sense for Green Bay. All right, we're going to finish up here. But before we do, today's episode brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Grand slams, no hitters, double plays, they're back. And there's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. That's right. New customers can step up to the plate with a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on, sign up, place your first bet and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. It's that easy. So just like bet on Aaron Judge to hit a home run. He's probably going to hit a home run. So don't miss your chance to get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes. From free agency to the draft, salary cap management, and more, join NFL experts Kyle Krabs, Joe Marino, as they take you through what it's like to build a successful NFL franchise every Monday through Friday. 
Find Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, Odell Beckham Jr. headed to Baltimore, not New York. I said we were going to be Aaron Rodgers free, um, and we are. I'm not going to talk about it. Rodgers, I'm not going to talk about the trade. Did I did I think about a certain Packers quarterback currently under contract saying people come to play with him, that he can be a recruiter, and that really that's never happened? No one's ever really done that that we know about. Um, and that the only time it's happened actually ever is in New York where a Packers receiver is going to New York to play with him, even though he's not there yet. Just something I think about, just something I was thinking about for reasons that, you know, uh, we, don't to, we don't have to talk about it. We don't have to talk about it. All right, back tomorrow. A lot more. We're just, we're just two weeks away, three weeks away from the draft. Um, what day is it? What year is it? What, what year is it? Oh my goodness. Um, so a lot of draft stuff here to come. Um, we're having fun. I, I I hope you're having fun. I'm having fun. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Wachowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast. iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to come hang out with us live, like when an Aaron Rodgers trade happens, you can do that on our Locked on Packers YouTube page. So you can stay Locked on Packers.